there's nothing more humbling than when you're walking to someone's gravesite. And if you are like me, when you're walking through a cemetery and you're getting ready to give the eulogy of someone that just passed, maybe it's a family member or maybe it's a good friend of yours, you see names on those tombstones and you wonder. You wonder how or wonder what happened. Maybe it's a family member and you look back and you see your last name on a tombstone. And you say, you know, I think I remembered him. I think I had a couple stories about him, but I just don't remember. This holiday weekend is set aside to remember, to honor those that we have had friendships with that have maybe served in the armed forces or maybe just your friend. That today is a day, this weekend is a weekend, not for picnics and parties. It's a day of remembrance, of respect, and honor. You go to any cemetery this weekend, you're going to see flowers. The flowers of a simple symbol of love and respect. I like that our teenagers and our children are in here today because it is a generational thing that we must communicate. We have to be able to talk. What did they do? How did they die? Do we have a link into the past? Because if we do not share our link into the past, the generation that comes behind us will never remember what was sacrificed. We have to communicate we have to love. We have to talk. What did these friends of ours, what did they mean to us? Why are they here? And so often when I um, go home to see my mom, um, you know, you get there and you're watching and talking to her and, and you leave and you have a 15, 20 minute window and um, every time I leave Wamego, I drive to the cemetery. I drive through the cemetery and I, I see my family members that have already passed by. And I walk out there and I, I, I look at them and kind of clean off the grave a little bit. And, and I, I ponder. I just ponder. I try to remember. I try to remember a relationship that we had. Something that my dad and I did or my brother and I did or my sister. We just talk and we just try to remember. I may not be able to do that with every person that I've ever had a memorial service for. But when they connect with us, we must be able to remember. We have to pass our remembrance to the next generation. You know, in the past, we didn't have TV. How, how we would pass on information is moms and dads sitting, talking to kids. And it was a story form. And when somebody passed on, we communicated about them tell them what they did, how they were honored. We communicated. We passed down our legacy through verbal communication. Now sometimes we barely talk about them. And sometimes when we do not talk, we soon forget. Is anybody else like that? If I don't put a thought into what I'm thinking about or I do something and I never think about it for six months, I soon forget the most important things that I'm here to do. I want to read a few things. Memorial Day doesn't mean that it's once, it doesn't mean what it once did. Memorial Day is just another Monday holiday. It makes the beginning of summer. It's the weekend of the Indy 500. School's out for the summer. The pools are open. It provides for the first real chance for picnics, barbecues, and maybe going out to the lake. But it hasn't always been that way. Memorial Day grew out of a human need to remember where we have been. Only then we figure out where we are going. And I, I believe that's in our culture today. I believe until we remember where we were, we're going to never know where to go. And we have to put it on or what did it do? What we did. Only then we can figure out where we are going. The cherished memories of a nation, a town, a church or a family provide the values and dreams that one generation passes on to the next. Forgetting means dropping the torch. 
forgetting to communicate to our generation behind us, is telling them that their generation has no connection to the last generation. Without the connection from one generation to the next, what happens is a lack of respect and a lack of honor. But when we make that connection from our past generation to the new generation, to the next generation, they, they can see our sacrifices and they can see the need. Sure, they're going to be doing things different. They should do things different. And the music should be different. The, the style should be different. The dress will be different. It was different from that generation to yours. And it will clearly be different from their generation to ours. But we have to allow them. We have to allow them to have that connection. Forgetting the past means dropping the torch, means there's a disconnect. All of this was on the mind of President Abraham Lincoln on November 19th in 1863 as he made his way to Pennsylvania battlefield. He feared that he might be the last president of the United States. The country teetered on brink of self-destruction. He was afraid that this was going to be the end. He was afraid that what he was going to go through, he was going to be the president over the nation for one term, and it was going to be the last president of the United States. The ceremony that afternoon would be the dedication site of a cemetery for over 40,000 soldiers killed at Gettysburg in a three-day battle the previous July. Lincoln's remarks provided the seedbed for what would become Memorial Day. He started it off with the dead Gettysburg Address, and you probably can quote it, but it says, four score and seven years ago, our fathers brought forth on this continent a new nation, conceived in liberty and dedicated to the proposition that all men are created equal. We have to be, we have to look at people and love people and respect people. He began, and two, two, two minutes later, he conceded with this. The world will be little note, nor long remembered, for what we say here. But it can never be forgotten what they did here, referring to the sacrifice of the soldiers. It is for us, the living, rather to be dedicated here to the unfinished work which they had fought here to have thus far so nobly advanced. It is rather for us to be here dedicated to the great task remained before us, that from these honored dead we take increased devotion so that cause for which they gave up the last full measure of devotion that we here highly resolve that these dead shall not have died in vain that the nation under God shall have lived a new birth of freedom a new government of the people by the people and for the people shall not perish from the earth he wanted to start saying this is important the sacrifice of these thousand men we cannot allow them to sacrifice in vain for over the next few years, many communities set aside special days to honor the fallen soldiers of the Civil War. Some services were held with decorations of, of honoring the soldiers' graves, flowers, and flags. Most towns referred to this event as the Decoration Day. After World War I, the day expanded to honor all American heroes of all wars. Gradually, the customs decorating the graves to relatives, to friends, became part of the day. Eventually, the official name was changed to Memorial Day. Originally, the day fell on May 30th in 1971. Congress moved to the date to the last day of May. Why Memorial Day? Why? It's because we have to remember. If we do not remember, we will soon drop the torch of everything that has gone on before us. And our generation behind us must know there's a passion. There's a passion within us as Christians. The, the past, the hurdles, the failures, the pains that we have experienced. If we neglect to communicate and remember where we have come from, our younger generation are going to come back and they will make the same mistakes or even worse mistakes because our generation, the Bible says, let the older communicate to the younger we must communicate the love we have, not only for our families, not only for God, not only for our country, but for each other. And how we do that? I believe we do that through respect and by remembrance. And I just listed three things, and I think it's very important that we remember some things, and our kids remember some things. 
And the first thing I believe before we are here, we are in this country, we have what we have, not because of the men dying. We have what we have is because those men died for something greater than themselves. They died for the prosperity and the blessing of God. The liberty in which they fought for. They wanted to stand for something. This country was built on the idea of, of religious freedom. Liberty to worship God in any way that they wanted to. It is not about being a Baptist or being a Jehovah Witness or being a Mormon. It's about serving God and let God be in our life. The freedom of that. We may not agree with doctrinally. We may not agree with what they do and how they do it, but that what they have, if they have the freedom to worship God. That is one of the principles that our country has to be standed upon. The first, we can't forget God's word. Because everything that they do, it may be different than what you like, the kids will do things that we may not like. The older generation may do things that we do not like. But we have to honor God in everything that we do and honor God's word. What does God's word say? When we look at what God's word says, it says we need to beware. Be very aware of God. And so often we leave God's word out. We don't care what God's word says. We care what we want or how we feel. And I believe it's very important to teach the next generation to come up. This is what God's word says. And the, the problem with us not doing that is because sometimes we don't know what it says. So we say, well, why don't you go to Awana's or why don't you go to Sunday school or, or why don't you go to the pastor? Because what we need to do as families, we need to sit down with our kids. This is what God's word says. And when we honor God's word, we remember what God's word says. We pray over our kids and we read some scriptures to our kids. The word of God becomes something that we do not forget. We hold on to it. And it's something that we can pass down. But if we drop the word of God, it's like dropping the torch of communication and connection from one generation to the next. We have to be remembering God's word. In Psalms chapter 103, verses 2 through 5, it says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all of his benefits. Who forgives all your iniquities? Who heals all your diseases? Who redeems you from your de destruction? Who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies? Who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like eagles? In Psalms chapter 97, verse 12, it says, Rejoice in the Lord, you righteous, and give thanks and remembrance of his holiness. We must remember who he is and what. He wants to remember what God did for our individual life. I was challenged. I've been challenged a lot about, you know, my kids are getting older. <laughs> uh, one's getting married next month, and the other's moving away from college. And I say praise Jesus for that. But um, <laughs> how are they going to remember me? Is there a time that I sat down with my kids and said, let me tell you what God did for me. They hear me speaking all the time. They hear my testimony from the pulpit many times. But was there a time that I sat down with them and said, this is what God did for me. This is where I was in my life. This is what I was doing and this is what God did. And God radically forgave me and transferred my heart from me to him and gain access to heaven. Can I sit down with my kids and can they tell me my story? Because if I do not have a connection from my kids to me about my salvation experience, they're going to say, you know what, I don't know if dad even had a salvation experience because he may see things but they've never sat down and verbally communicated things with me and I think each and every one of us all of our adults we should sit down with each and of our kids and we should say this is what took place in my life and I want to share with you what Jesus has done for me and you know what they will do they say dad can I come and tell you what Jesus has done for me and I tell you what, there's not a greater uh, a, a moment when you can tell your kids what Jesus has done for you and they turn around and tell you their salvation experience because you're not here 
to raise them up for 18 years to go to college. We have been given a kid. We've been given our children to raise them up so they can see Jesus Christ and high and lifted up and let God bless them and use them. We cannot allow the next generation to forget God's word and God's power. If we forget, we drop a torch. And they look back at their life and they may say, Dad, I did not know that. Dad, I never heard you communicate about that. And then we will never be able to communicate to them because they have lost the power. And David said in Psalm chapter 119, verse 11, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. We have to remember God's word. Because after we remember God's word, we, we get to remember God in worship. We get to remember God in worship. And in, in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, it says, Not forsaking the assembly of ourselves together, as many of the some do, but exhorting one another as so much more that we see the day approaching. Exhorting. Exhort one another. When, when we worship, we don't just worship in our, own, in our own little area. What we get to do is we get to exhort we get to encourage. We get to experience God's power. When we, when we experience how God can, can not only change my life, but how he can change your life, I have no problem with worshiping his name. I have no problem with communicating his truth. Because when I worship, when worship is not necessarily singing, worship is not necessarily raising your hands, worship could be me praying for my kids. For the next generation. Worshiping can be me reading, praying, or singing. Worship can be the attitude of my heart when I'm mad. When I'm putting God's word into place. I am worshiping. I'm focusing on God. And so often our kids never experience our worship. Because all they see is our words. But worship to our kids could very easily say, let's pray together. And the best most intimate worship experience that you could have is praying with your kids. Hearing, hearing from your lips, naming your kid's name, putting your hand upon their shoulder and praying for them, praying for who they will be someday, praying for who they're going to marry someday, praying for them is the ultimate act of worship because you're hearing your voice to God using your kids' names, and you have one responsibility, and that responsibility is not necessarily to put a roof over their head. Our main responsibility is when we train them up, they will see God. They have given their life to Christ. They will be a ready individual to follow after you to raise up their kids the way that you raised them. Train. Equip. Don't drop the torch. Don't forget it's so easy to do things. And remember, we have a generational thing that we must do. And we must never forget what God has given to us. In Psalms 9, 39, 30, it says, My heart grew hot within me while I meditated. The fire burned, then I spoke with my tongue. There's things, some motivation. David says, say, I have to be motivated. A fire burnt within me. I, I had a desire. I, I wanted to meditate on God's word and I wanted to do things. And so often we have, to, we have to engage a generation, a culture. We have to engage them and we have to have a power of God in order to do that. But it's so often, just like Memorial Day, if we do not remember to do something, very quickly it becomes something that we just don't do. In Bible studies, with, the fun, with homes, with our kids, we have had a commitment you come back from camp, you have a commitment that, uh, that I'm going to read the Bible and I'm going to pray and, and I'm going I'm to do things that God wants me to do. We go to camp and I have the little kids at camp and, and they're dedicated to do something for God and they come back and, and they're on fire. They want to, but they forget to do something for a month, six months. And the thing that they were committed to, they forgot and they dropped the ball. They dropped the torch. So instead of making a recommitment, they continue in the path that they're on until next year at camp or until next church service. And you know what? I needed to do that, and I should have done that. But if we forget or if we drop the torch, we have to say, 
stop. I'm going to do what God's word has asked me to do. I'm not going to forget God's word. I'm going to worship him and I'm going to honor him in every area of my life. But I would be amiss if I did not tell you the third and probably the one thing that we cannot forget. We cannot forget God's warnings. God has warned us that there's a judgment. And if we're talking about this generation, this generation today is brought up, and most of them do not believe in a literal heaven and a literal hell. Now, God's word does say that. And as this preacher, I totally believe that. I believe that I gave my life to Jesus Christ and he saved me from hell. He gave me access to heaven. He forgave me of all of my sins because my sins were my separation between me and God. And God sent his son, Jesus, to make a reconciliation, a propitiation for my sins so I can go to heaven. There is a warning. There is judgment coming in Romans chapter 14, verses 11 through 12. For it is written, as I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, every tongue shall confess to God, so that every one of us shall give an account to himself. It is an account. Every knee will bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. There is a heaven and there is a hell. In Psalm chapter 9, verse 17, it says, the wicked shall turn into hell and the nation that forgets their God. Absence from Jesus. Absence. A burning literal hell. We have to t talk. We can't forget the end result. We all have had family members that have passed away. We've all had family members that are on the verge of, of going through major issues within their life, and their life may be six months or it may be a year, maybe further along, but it may be at the end that you have to make some major decisions over the next couple, three months. And those decisions are very difficult. They're very difficult. Those family meetings where you're talking about the end things are very difficult. So they called me in to every one of those meetings. And my job at those meetings is to ask the very hard question. Some of those meetings that you're going through is very obvious. He's a man of God and, and or a woman of God and they, they love Jesus and they, they, their life was very evident of that. And they can talk about their testimony and when they gave their life to Jesus. But everyone has a question in their hearts and in their minds right before death. What's next? What's next? Is he in heaven or not? And I wish I could say, well, just because you go to church, you get to go to heaven. Just because you own a Bible, you get to go to heaven. When you were in seventh grade, the, uh, the, what, the Gideons came to your school and they gave you a Bible and you still have it in your possession. So because you own a Bible, you get to go to heaven. I wish I could say that. I wish, I wish I could say, blessed and you get to go. But every one of those meetings, I sit down with the family and I said, tell me about his life. Tell me about his spiritual life. And I ask the question that I have to ask each and every one of us because we are too on a deathbed confession someday. Has there ever been a day that you've confessed your sin before Jesus? Has there been a day that you said, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and Savior? I accept you that you died on the cross, you shed your blood, and I accept what you have done. Because that cross, that blood, was God's way to reconcile you to him. God never dropped the ball. He remembered you. He loved you. The first scriptures in John chapter 15, verse 13. Greater love has no one than this, that to lay down one's life for his friends. In Romans chapter 5, verses 8. But God demonstrated his love toward us. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. 
Much more than having now been justified by his blood, we shall be saved from the wrath through him. We shall be saved from the wrath because of him. So often, we want to celebrate Memorial Day. The day of remembrance. And I truly believe it's a day of celebration because they have sacrificed. But I believe it's also a bigger thing. I believe it's a day of connection. We need to remember what God's word says. We need to remember our kids are a priority. We need to pray over them and love them and let us worship what God has given to them. And then we need to remember what the future holds. Because that's the day of remembrance. You know, there was a ship. It was called the Robert E. Lee Pleasure Boat. Steamed out of Vicksburg, hundreds of people were on board. After midnight, the boat's engine caught on fire. The captain discovered it, and he went to his first mate, and he said, tell everybody the ship is on fire. The ship is on fire. So the first mate went to all the cabins yelling, the ship is on fire. The ship is on fire. And some of the men and women got mad at the first mate for waking them up. Some of them were annoyed that they woke him up. Some of them staggered out of the ship and saw the flames and jumped overboard and they were saved. But some of them just ignored the story. Ignored the first mate and say, the captain will take care of it. The captain will take care of it. I am busy or I'm sleeping and I am not going to be messed with. In three minutes, that ship sunk. Hundreds of people died because they did not heed the warning. And I believe our life is like that sinking ship every once in a while. That we all have a time. We have a time that we have to make a decision. What will we do with what we have? And our life is like a fleeting vapor. It's here today. And gone tomorrow. And what we do with the decisions that we have. And the time that we have is so, so important. Don't get mad. Don't get mad at the messenger. Don't get mad at God's word. Don't get mad because you don't agree with it. Don't get mad because the way it's delivered. What we have to do is we have to take the word of God and say, Lord, this is what you have for me. I want to pass this on to the next generation. I do not want to forget what you have done for me. I want to share it. I want to love it. And I want to pass it to the next generation. It changed my life. I can't forget what God did for me. And my job is to pass it on. Don't forget Always remember what Jesus means to you. Let's bow our heads. Dear Father, we come to you and we use this holiday, this Memorial Day holiday to, to honor those that have died in front of us. And Lord, we go to their graves and we decorate them. And Lord, we are humbled because of their life. But Lord, I want to remember their life, but I want to connect the generation to them to remember what they have done for us to remember what you have done for us let us never forget the power and the majesty of forgiveness and your grace that you've given to us allow us to remember you allow us to honor you in every area of our life in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. There's a scripture, and then I'm going to put some music on. We're going to have a time of prayer. Greater love has no one than this, that you lay down your life for your friends. Jesus is our friend. He loves us unconditionally. And the only thing he has asked us to do is to love him and to honor him. In your spiritual life, if there's things that maybe you've just been slacking on, things that you just aren't doing, things that you have forgotten, maybe when you were a teenager, maybe a young man or a young woman, you made a commitment to God to do something or to be somebody. I'm going to ask you, why don't we make that commitment again? Never forget what God has done for you. Never allow what we should do 
to not be done because we have forgotten. Once we are reminded, once God has opened up our hearts and opened up our lives, let us make that commitment to him to change our life. Will you please stand to your feet? Allow us the opportunity to uh, have a time of prayer and a time of invitation that God can work within our life. Dear Father, be with us. Change our hearts. Change our lives. Protect us. Move us. Move us to where you want us to go. If you would like, allow this church to be a lighthouse. Allow the family of God that's here to come alongside and to encourage one another, to, to exhort them, to love them, to worship, and to be part of a family, to be part of this family. We thank you for taking care of us in every area. In Jesus' name that we do pray. Amen.